Hello. It's often desirable to know whether two sets of properties are equivalent or not. So occasions where we may want to do this is informal, for example. So informal, each assertion is dealt with as a individual problem, which only addresses the cone of influence of that particular assertion. Cone of influence meaning the fanning cone of all the signals in the property. And the bigger that cone of influence is, the more likely it is that it will be a more difficult problem for formal to prove, hence take longer. So one very effective technique in kind of overcoming this is to split up a original property into more than one property. So each one of these equivalent properties, hopefully, is smaller than the original, therefore we'll have a smaller cone of influence, therefore we'll get the results quicker. So let's take this simple example here. Our requirement is a request needs to be held high and enable needs to stay stable until they get acknowledged. So our initial attempt at writing this would be something like this, which is a perfectly sensible thing to do. However, we might find when we're running this informal that it's taking longer than we would hope for. So what we can do is look at this and say, can I split up that behavior into a set of smaller properties, which will overall check the same thing. In this case, it's easy to see that if I have these two properties, rec and not act implies rec, and reckon not act implies stable ENA. They're both the same thing. It's fairly trivial in this case to see that, but there are other cases where it may not be so clear cut that we could make that determination that they're both equivalent. Let's say, how would we go and verify this? And how could we say in an EDA tool, if I have this original property over here, then these two properties are the equivalent of that single one. When I have two properties here in formal, what I can then do is run each of them in parallel, as well as each problem being smaller, I can run them in parallel as well, which leads to large savings in time for me. So the general idea about doing this is you know, not as trivial as the previous example is. It is a different example where it's not so clear cut that they're equivalent. So if I have a property which says if my sig is false, the next cycle it's always true. Is that the same as saying I don't observe not my sig for two consecutive cycles? Uh, again, so you know, the more complicated these things get, the more hard it would be to be able to say with 100% confidence that they're both equivalent. So the basis of this is we take our sets of properties and we make one an assumption and one set an assertion. And then we apply this to a design that contains nothing. All the design contains is wires, which are the signal names. So there's no design there. All we're doing is on those pieces of wire, asserting one set of properties and assuming the other set of properties, those properties which we wish to test are equivalent or not. And when doing this, another important consideration is we must prove it both ways, meaning that we assert one set and assume the other set, and then we swap over, which was an assumption is now an assert which was an assert is now an assume. Because if we don't do this, then we could be hiding problems. So let's take a look at some code example now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Jasper Gold in order to check the equivalence of these sets of properties. And we know, because it's formal, it's done with 100% confidence. So here's our design. It's a design that only has inputs. So I've just labeled them A, B, C, D, and so on, rather than type their whole name, like rec, ac, and so on, just to make it less typing. And that's all. We've got input ports and nothing else. The rest is just SVA properties and default clock declaration there. So we're using pos edge clock. Notice we also have clock and reset just because it's easier. When we say next cycle in formal, we need to have some the context of that. So we need something to which we apply the clock command and a reset if you know we had a reset as well. It just doesn't do any harm to have it there if we're not using it. So here's our property that we said before. A and not B implies next cycle A is true and D has been stable. Okay, so that was our original property if you remember back to the slide. So we have a set with only one property in it here, and we wish to check, is this set here of these two properties equivalent? So here we go, we separate that and, and we create two properties with the same left-hand side, and each of the and terms appears on the right-hand side there. So are these two things equivalent? So what we're doing first off is, for this set here, we're saying assert them, and for these everything in this set of properties we're saying assume. Before we run the tool, one important aspect of when you're doing this is when you elaborate the minus create related covers, this defaults to precondition, meaning if you have a property with implication, like here, like left-hand side implies a right-hand side, you get an automatic cover created of the left-hand side by default, just to prove it's not a vacuous pass. However, when you're doing this equivalence check of properties, it's better to say minus created related covers witness. So this shows you the whole property passing. So rather than just having a cover for the left hand side, you've got a cover of the whole thing. So basically it's a cover of the sequence A and not B, hash hash one A. That's the automated cover that gets created for you. So it's important we know the whole property can complete. That's the reason we do this. So let's run the tool now. And here we have the results and we see that our assertion is passing here. And if we look at the uh, witness here, this is an example of it passing. So A and not B imp implies A in the next cycle. 
and we've also got a, a cover for the other one as well. So it's all well and good looking that way around. So while we're here, what we'll do is we'll look at the schematic for this. And that's our schematic. Just wires, nothing else there. Okay, so what we'll do to prove we're not cheating is we'll go and change it in the file itself. So we're going to change in this set, we're going to make everything on assumption. There's only one property. And in this set of properties, we're going to make this on assert. And then in Jasper, you do that to reload the TCL script and run again. And we can see now we've got two asserts instead of one now. Um, and our covers are passing as well. So now we know those two sets of properties are equivalent, which we probably could already guess because it's such a simple problem to evaluate in your head anyway. So now we have a different case here. We have one property in each set. So what I'm trying to do is prove that whether this SVA property that's using this S underscore until operator, which was introduced in the 2009 LRM, is it the same thing as describing a property with a sequence like this? So again, I've asserted the properties in this set. There's only one. So I've asserted that and I've assumed the other. What this property says is if I have A implies from the next cycle not D is true until C occurs. So basically I'm checking that if A occurs from the next cycle I get a C before I observe a D. And I'm hoping that this does the same thing. So let's run the tool and see what happens. Okay, so the assertion's passing here. Let's have a look at the cover. A is occurring and on the next cycle we're observing a D. So if we look at back at the property, notice we're saying nothing about, on the cycle where C occurs, we're saying nothing about what D's doing. So that's perfectly acceptable as a cover. Now let's change them around. Um, let's swap the assert to an assume and assume to an assert and see what happens. So this one's assume, this one assert. Save that and reload this. Ah, now we've got a condition now where on the previous way around where we had one property asserted, one assumed, and when we swapped them, we saw a change in behavior now. So now we're seeing a failure. So let's look at this counter example. So what we notice is from this counter example, the first thing we see is this dirty kind of yellow stripe here that indicates a liveness fail. So what this means is this yellow strip, it's as if I copied and pasted that to the right hand side for eternity. And what it shows is once A is high, the next cycle we get C being low forever and D being low forever. So we think to ourselves, well, that sounds strange, because if we look at this source window here, let me open it again to make sure we're looking at the current one we, that we've got. So, you know, there is, there is no requirement for C to ever occur with this property. Okay, that, that's why it's failing. So what we've learned from this is that two things. One, that you have to do it both ways around. You know, assert one set of properties and, and assume the other, and then flip it around. And also, we've learned what strong means. So this S underscore on the front of this operator, what that means is strong meaning C has to occur at some point. This property here does not say strong, okay? So there's no requirement for C to ever occur with that property. That's why there's a difference in their behavior. Okay, so how can we verify my kind of proposition there? Well, we can just hard code that in the property strong. So there is an equivalent operator until without the S underscore in front, which would be the same as this behavior before I type strong. But what I'm gonna do is save that now. I'm gonna reload the code and now it passes. And of course, I would have to check it the other way around as well in order to be sure. So let's do that now. Okay, so the asserts passing both ways around and the covers passing both ways around. So now I know those two properties are equivalent. I now learned what S underscore means on front of the until operator. I can also use this kind of technique for checking whether PSL and SVA properties are equivalent. So let's say that I'm more familiar with PSL, but I've got to start using SVA now. Might not be too certain about the syntax. I want to check that what I could do in PSL, I can replicate that in SVA. Or, you know, there may be a multitude of reasons why, why I would want to do this. So let's look at what we have here. Here we have some verification component that contains a property. And this property is using the until with operator that was introduced in System Verilog in 2009 LRM. And what I wish to know is, is it the same as this PSL property that I, I have here? In PSL, I know there's a similar operator, which I hope is the same actually, not similar, the same, until underscore. So that's called inclusive until. Uh, I'm hoping that's the same thing. So what we do, the same sort of technique, we use back to back, we assert one and assume the other. And when we run this, we find indeed, if I go back to the top level to show all the assumption and the assertion, we see our covers are passing and the uh, asserts passing and, you know, 
I won't bore you with the details of showing you the, the other way around as well, but it passes the opposite direction too. So you know both of those things are the same. So that's a useful thing to do, um, compare one language against another or compare one set of properties against another. Okay, so I hope you find that useful. It's simple to replicate this. Remember, all you need is an empty module and that's it and write your properties. There's no more to it than that. And don't forget in your TCL script, make sure you turn on this minus created related covers option for the elaborate command to say witness instead of what the default would be which is precondition in order that you have a full cover of the entire property passing otherwise you might be hiding problems there too okay so i hope you found this useful and thanks for listening and goodbye mm -hmm.